Hello, ladies and gentlemen, loyal Imperial citizens and rebel scum alike. Welcome to another Leah Maiden gameplay video. Back with more Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes today, where we're going to be taking a quick look at some of the exciting news that we've had from Capital Games regarding Galaxy of Heroes. Now, this came from a uh, forum post, the Road Ahead forum post from Capital Games that came out just a couple of days ago. There's a lot in here, a lot to get through, so I'm just going to try and go through it as quickly as possible. Uh, rather than go in order, I'm going to just start with uh, what I think is the biggest thing, what I'm personally most excited about, and that is that finally we have confirmation that Moff Gideon will be entering the game. This post confirms we're going to get Moff Gideon through a Marquis event. So that's really interesting because obviously we've had Queel and IG-11 are coming to us. One's already come to us, the other is coming to us through Galactic Challenges. There is more news about Galactic Challenges in this post that we'll get to in a minute, but they're showing that they're not completely abandoning the Marquis format for the introduction of characters. Uh, Moff Gideon is gonna be a Marquis release that we should be getting really soon. This is super exciting. A lot of people have been um, really excited at the prospect of Moff Gideon uh, arriving in game for quite a while now. Um, really exciting to see what they do with him in terms of tags. I mean, I imagine he's going to have the Empire tag, even though technically the Empire has fallen. I guess he's in command of a, a, a remnant. Um, but this is really interesting. Loving the Mando content right now. Loving the Mandalorian right now, uh, season two. But Mando content in the game has been some of the best in a long while. Really excited about this. They don't give an exact date, but I think we can expect that really soon, definitely before um, the new year. Now, the other thing that they mention in this post that people are getting really excited about is that they just kind of casually drop that a new raid is going to be coming to the game. Now, this is a little more complicated. When they talk about the raid, they explain that the whole idea is that they're going to be introducing this raid that will not be soloable at launch. You won't be able to solo it at launch. And this has been a big issue, especially with the introduction of uh, Galactic Legends characters. But anyway, just with some of the more powerful legendary characters, the existing raids uh, are very soloable. It's entirely possible that people with a good roster, with powerful characters, can solo some of these raids. So the idea that they're going to be throwing in a new raid out there that's going to be a lot more difficult, again, really exciting for people at that top end of the game. For me, not so much. Um, I'm in a guild right now. We're still struggling to get through the, the Sith raid on Seven Stars, to be perfectly honest with you. So I don't imagine this is necessarily going to be something that um, I really get to see any major benefit from any time soon. But do check out the post if you get a chance. It gives a few more details there. Basically, they're going to be kind of adding in a new challenge tier to the Rancor Raid. So the existing Rancor Raid is going to be unaffected, but there is going to be this new tier um, with additional... Um, requirements and presumably it's going to be an awful lot harder. They're also going to be upgrading the graphics on the Rancor Raid. So we should get the, the Rancor itself should look cooler and the guards as well. So that I am actually excited about. They do seem to be slowly implementing these graphics updates. I think when we got that news about the update um, last month, everyone kind of assumed, myself included, that we'd download an update and suddenly the game would look different. Um, it appears that actually what they're, they're kind of doing is rolling out slowly these graphical upgrades. So we've got that to look forward to as well. Then, while they're talking about um, the, the raids, they kind of casually drop in there that uh, Relic 8 is coming to the game. We are going to be getting Relic 8. Again, this is a huge thing for the game. It's about upping that meta, upping the ante, upping the top power levels. Huge thing for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Not that huge for me, and if you're like me, you're another mid-game player or beginning game players, uh, unless you're really looking to heavily invest in the game, drop a lot of money in Galaxy of Heroes, this probably isn't going to be that big a thing for you, at least not immediately. Uh, those Relic 8 materials, apparently you're going to get them from this new raid tier, this new um, challenge, the Rancor challenge tier. Um, I guess that's kind of exciting if you're at that level. The highest character I have is currently Relic 3, so I'm not going to hold my breath for these Relic 8 materials. They're way beyond me. Am I excited they're being added to the game? Yes, I am. It shows growth in the game, and it's going to keep those top players top spenders involved in the game, uh, and that's what we need to keep this game going. We need people spending money at that top level, um, and of course, it's aspirational. One day, one day, maybe I'll get there. The next exciting thing they talk about here are changes to Galactic Challenge. 
Now, Galactic Challenge obviously has been um, a big focus lately, as we already uh, mentioned with the release of Queel and IG-11 through this new game mode. I think that was pretty successful. I actually really enjoyed their events. Um, I kind of like that you then got to revisit it a week later to get additional shards. Um, I thought that was a success, and it seems to be uh, have been pretty well received in the, in the community. Um, what they're talking about doing, they've been very clear from the beginning that Galactic Challenge is still an evolving area of the game. And one of the things that I'm really excited about that they mentioned here is that they're going to add an auto-complete feature. You're going to be able to auto-complete these, right, these, these tier challenges in Galactic Challenge. Now the way that's going to work is if you've completed, so if you complete uh, Galactic Challenge Tier 5, you're basically going to re get the um, rewards for all the lower tiers as well. So you're going to get the rewards for 4, 3, 2, and 1. That is awesome. People wanted a new game mode, they wanted more time to be able to spend on the game playing something new and exciting, but they don't want to spend all of their time um, trudging through repetitive challenges again and again. So the idea that you can just go in, you can uh, um, take it out, complete the challenge at the highest level you can manage, and then get all of those rewards in a one that's pretty exciting, and I think it's going to have a lot of people um, really happy. The next thing that they mention is that they are going to be introducing, finally, the new currency. Now, this was something that I remember them uh, bringing up as soon as they, right before they launched a Galactic Challenge, they were really clear that it was going to have um, a new currency that was associated with it, and then we never saw it, or at least we haven't seen it yet. What they're saying is that this new currency is on the horizon. We are going to get it soon. Um, I don't know exactly what that's going to mean. Presumably we'll get a new store um, in the store section. We'll have to wait and see. Um, it, th this could be really exciting. I'm not against them adding more currencies to the game. I do think sometimes games can get kind of bogged down if they get too many currencies, but I am not against this uh, in principle. I think this could actually be pretty cool. Another currency to collect, uh, potentially another place to build up shards and cool gear. And then they finish the post by saying that there's going to be major expansions uh, to Galactic Challenge that they have planned. They don't detail them here, but we're going to see major expansion, major changes next year in February and March. So keep an eye out for that. That is really exciting. So that's the update. They're the highlights of the information that they give us here. Main takeaways, Moth Gideon, new raids, Relic 8, and changes to challenges. This all looks really good. It seems to be capping off a really great year for Capital Games, a really great year for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Great for the game, great for the community. A lot of good news in there. Uh, right at the end of a, a string of good, um, good output, good events, new characters. Uh, this has been uh, a really great few months for the game. Really exciting, especially given the year that we've been having generally in 2020. So speaking of a uh, good end to the year, going out on a high, something else that they mentioned in this post is of course the fact that this year will be, the end of this year, will be the fifth anniversary for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Now that's something that I've spoken about a little bit in some of my previous videos, the ones I made just recently. That in itself is kind of amazing that this game is five years old, but it's lasted for five years. The people are still spending money on this game in the way that they are. It's a five-year-old game that's pretty amazing and you know, it's testament to the great community that we've really built here around Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, about our love of Star Wars, but our love of the game as well. Now recently, Cubs, Cubs fan, uh, if you haven't watched his videos, if you don't watch his videos and don't know who it is, first of all, what are you doing watching my videos? Uh, you should really go check him out, he's awesome. Um, he recently made a great video looking at all of the anniversary gifts that they've given out at the end of every of the past uh, four years, the previous gifts they've given out for the, the previous four anniversaries, the first four anniversaries of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I'll put a link um, to that video down in the description below. It's a really cool video. Check it out if you get a chance. What he basically posits, uh, looking at what, what's been given out over the last few years, is that there's a high probability, according to Cubs fan, this is Cubs fan Han's theory, not mine, he suggests that we could be getting Galactic Legends shards this year as part of a fifth anniversary celebration and as part of their regular um, end of year kind of goodies 
Christmas time, New Year's time, Hanukkah time, whatever, these gifts that they're giving out to players. And that is pretty exciting. Now, if we just quickly look at last year, for example, um, they gave out uh, Darth Malak shards and General Anakin Skywalker shards. I give out 10 shards of each, so nowhere near enough to unlock. Really just a, a little drop in the ocean there. As you can see, they're actually the only shards that I have for either of these characters still. Um, but you know what? That's still pretty cool. I think it's it's really nice. It shows some appreciation. Uh, just throwing out some kind of breadcrumbs there just to keep you um, keep your appetite up for these brand new characters. Now what Cups Van Han basically states in his video is that this time last year we didn't have Galactic Legends. So General Anakin Skywalker and Darth Malak were basically, they were our equivalent of Galactic Legends at that time. They were the most powerful characters in the game. They were the meta in the game and they were the brand new characters. Characters. So there is a high probability that they could give out Galactic Legends shards in the next month or so for the kind of end of year, fifth anniversary celebration. And that's pretty exciting. Why am I repeating it here? I'm repeating it here because I think that's pretty sound logic. I think there's a good chance we could get some Galactic Legends shards. Do I think they're going to give out a ton of shards? I do not. I think once again, it's going to be kind of 10 shards here, five shards there. However, I think it'd still be pretty cool to get some shards, especially for players at the mid game, players like me, who maybe have very few, or in my case, zero shards for any of the Galactic Legends characters. They might do that, they might not. Another way they might go, and this is actually the one that I'm more excited about, and this is just my theory, is they might just give us more shards of non-Galactic Legends characters. What if, instead of giving us uh, 10 shards for um, Jedi Master Luke, for Sith Eternal Emperor, for Rey, and Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, what if instead they gave us 10 or even 20 shards for General Anakin Skywalker, for uh, Darth Malak, for... Um, Kaedi Mundi, um, for uh, Wat Tambor, um, for Darth Treya. There are so many other characters out there that they could give us some cool shards for. Is it more likely that they're going to give us just a couple of shards for maybe two Galactic Legends? Or would they give us maybe 10 or 20 shards for characters that aren't quite of that legendary status? Even better, why not let us choose? Um, a little while ago, back at Halloween, Marvel Strike Force ran a Twitter poll. They probably ran in other, other social media too. I only saw it on Twitter. They were gonna give out some free shards for a character for Halloween, and you could choose between Mr. Sinister or Minerva. That was a cool way to do it. Minerva won, I was happy either way, but that's some free Minerva shards, and then it's a poll, so people actually get to have a say, and you kind of get what you want, or rather the community gets what it wants. I think that'd be a really cool thing for them to do as well. Let us vote on it and decide what characters we want shards for. I don't know, just some ideas, just kind of throwing it out there. As I said, do check out the Cubs, Cubs fan video if you haven't seen it. I will put that link down in the description. Um, it gets a good video to get you really excited for what they might be doing for the fifth anniversary giveaway. Either way, there's definitely going to be something, definitely gonna be some shards involved, and I am pretty excited. Well, that's that's pretty much it. That's the news roundup for everything we got at the end of the week and over the weekend about Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Uh, what do you think of all of this? Uh, let me know, thoughts, comments, criticism, suggestions down below. Really excited to read what you've got to say. Um, as always, if you found this video um, enjoyable or interesting in any way, please consider giving it a like, a thumbs up, um, and why not consider subscribing to the channel? I drop new Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and Marvel Strike Force videos every week. Also, don't forget, this weekend is the first instance of the IG-11 Galactic Challenge event, so make sure you take part in that to get your IG-11 unlocked at two stars. Um, I'll be making a video about that. I'll see you then. Until then, look after each other, and remember, the Force will be with you. Always.